like uh, many of your companies might have as well. Here are a few elements. Uh, we have a program at firm's level. We are, for example, the uh, head sponsor of Médecins Sans Frontières. And it's not a matter of giving money. Médecins Sans Frontières is a big logistics operation. You know, you have all these drugs going and equipment, etc. And we have people specialized in tax issues, for example, in logistics supply chain management issues, who in their free time help this organization to, op to optimize their operations. Yeah? Um, we also have a system where each individual working for uh, the firm has a half a day per month where they can spend their time during working hours on a project. They need to present that project to a committee. You have certain criter criteria to accept or reject the project. But if it passes the exam, then these people can spend a half a day, and we complement that with, and, uh, sorry, they, they can do this during working hours, but they need to complement it with a half a day of their own time or more, right? So that uh, explains also a bit the, the number of hours that you see at the top of the slide that are spent on different initiatives. And then in addition to this, we have one day per year where people are invited to work. Uh, that's on a Saturday. Uh, we did this two weeks ago, three weeks ago, right? Two weeks ago, Manuel. Uh, where we spend them on certain places in Belgium, in social projects where people go, they, could, they may take their spouses <coughs> with them, their kids, and where they do something useful uh, in a certain area where people uh, really uh, need help or appreciate our support. So that's the kind of things we do. Also, as part of our culture, we're quite motivated in trying to be uh, uh, or uh, making sure that our footprint, uh, ecological footprint, uh, is acceptable. I must say, you see the certain elements of what we do, we also recycle water because this building is built on Brussels Moor, so there's a lot of water underneath this building. This goes minus four in terms of parking, and then, and so we pump it up and recycle it, use it for the toilets, etc. Our major issue is as a service company we have a lot of cars we have more than 1,000 cars company cars and that's a, that's a big issue uh, uh, which means that if you look at our overall footprint we are quite limited in what we can do uh, good news is that our people are very keen in making sure that this is respected and I get uh, uh, quite often mails with suggestions that we take serious go to a committee etc cetera, etc cetera. anyway Again, it's just to give you an impression of what kind of culture we have in this firm. In terms of services, um, important is, in everything we do, is make sure that we uh, can use our multidisciplinary capability. We have all kinds of specialists here in accounting, financial management, treasury management, all kinds of tax issues, but also supply chain management, uh, uh, you name it, in certain industry sectors like uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, insurance business, banks, etc., etc. And we, we train our people when they join us uh, as technical specialists in a certain area because only then you can measure what their potential is from that perspective. Uh, after a few years, if you want to really be successful, you need to be able to uh, make sure that you can operate as a team member in a multidisciplinary team because that's basically where we uh, bring added value to the table. It's uh, dealing with complex uh, situations where we can help to create value as the slide says and quite often it comes by because of by putting one plus one together you, you make three in terms of uh, quality. That's also the challenging part of for those who uh, stay longer with us or with a full career that's do you start to discover how you can leverage your own competences, right? And these situations are always different depending on what kind of assignment you're put on. <coughs> Good. Uh, that's a uh, very short list of the kind of things we do. Uh, we normally tend not to give names of clients, but these have been in the press like Avia Partners where uh, we help them to uh, rejuvenize, in fact, their activities and prepare them for next phase in their development. 
We do a lot of acquisitions. I may say that in, um, due diligence and that kind of work, we are the market leader in Belgium. So a lot of that stuff comes here. Unfortunately enough, in this uh, economic situation, that market is almost dead. We have lucky enough, given that we have these different multidisciplinary capabilities, um, other areas where people or companies uh, uh, need our support. It's another interesting element of this business that is that we uh, can easily adapt to the economic situation, whether there is uh, a growth in the economy or whether there, uh, we are in a situation as we know today. Uh, we also work for different levels uh, in Belgium of the public sector, also in the context of PPPs. Uh, you see a few examples here. And um, I may say that, for example, for the Flemish community, uh, uh, most of what is in the agreement, the Trigere Accord, has been pre-studied in this house. Yeah. Uh, the Marshall Plan in uh, La Wallonie, there's a commission, and the chairman of that is uh, Luc van Steenkisten, as you may know. All the reports that go to that committee are first studied here, analyzed. Yeah. It's the kind of things we do. Uh, thought leadership. These are all publications or books. You might see them at the interest, sometimes thick like this. Uh, not always the most enjoyable uh, <laughs> literature. <laughs> I would not pretend that I read all this, and none of my partners, I think, but uh, uh, this is sophisticated stuff produced in this house. This is not international, so we have a lot of people, who are, and it's part of also making a career uh, in this house is that you demonstrate thought leadership on all kinds of subjects. You see it's on intellectual property, on VAT stuff, on uh, you name it. Uh, but also, here was someone, I think, on the right-hand side. I hardly can read it, but it's about the pharmaceuticals, biochemical, and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, we also get awards uh, also at Belgian level. Uh, here in Belgium, we have been recognized as the first European transfer pricing firm uh, for, what is it, the fifth time in a row. So it's people from here. Another, also again, Belgian group, uh, Europe-wide, this prize is, uh, we received that also always on a big gala in London as the best treasury consulting firm for the nine tax person of the year 2009. We were that global uh, winner of the Global Knowledge Award uh, and the most admired knowledge enterprise. Uh, we have been in the top 10 for the last decade as uh, one of the top employers in the Randstad uh, ranking, etc. So, but it gives you an uh, impression, I hope, of <coughs> what we understand when we say we go for quality and what kind of uh, uh, culture uh, we cultivate. Uh, in this firm. So I'm not sure that there are any questions. I'm open for questions, but I realize that there are two uh, distinguished speakers that you came for. And so I would like to hand over to Alain. Is that right from here on? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now everybody knows exactly what Pricewaterhouse does. And uh, you can thank you very much, Roger, for all this explanation. Uh, top management, as you know, organize six times a year the success stories. And success stories is, in fact, the idea is to give 20 minutes to say how and what they do. And today, I'm very pleased to be here and to welcome three CEOs with different story. They're going to tell you what they do, how they do, and uh, their, the way they reach from the maybe not really the beginning, but more or less the beginning. But before, I would just put this uh, sentence uh, to your thought that um, there are some people who live in a dream world, and there are some who face reality. And then there are those who turn one into the other. And I think that some of you 
and for sure the CEOs uh, which are who are here today are the one who turned.